I got no intro this time. I didn't have any ideas. I don't have a detector, so I couldn't have done anything fancy with that. I could have had a toy train go across the screen, but I don't have any toy trains. <laughs> oh well. There's your intro. Deal with it. So, um, Tamers didn't get a sequel, which may have been good if you looked at how Zero Two turned out for adventure. So we're immediately thrown into a brand new universe, um, Digimon Frontier. Now, like I said when I was trying to poorly transition from my Tamers review into this one, I said that this is probably the most controversial season. It's it's mostly due to the evolution style. Um, but that's something I'm going to get to a little bit later. Um, my little story overview is going to be a little bit different this time because I'm going to go. I'm going to try to go chronologically because it, it makes explaining the story of the season so much easier. Okay, so the Digi World started off with a. It was like a big war between the human Digimon and the Beast Digimon. There's a big conflict. I don't think they ever explained why they started fighting, but they just did. So, there's like this big war going on between these two types of Digimon for years. And um, one day, a Digimon named Lucimon stands up to him and ends the fighting. He, he somehow ends the war. They didn't really go into that either. He just said Lucimon managed to end the war and put the Digi world in peace. So both sides decided to give him the key to the digital world, make him the king. He eventually started to go power crazy and began like ruling the world with an iron fist, so he became an evil, evil ruler. So just like how he stood up to the war that was going on, ten Digimon as we as later be known as the Ten Legendary Warriors, stand up to him, go into a big showdown with Lucimon and beat him and lock him away in a prison in the center of the digital world. So that's, so Lucimon's reign is over. Um, I think, I don't know exactly how they passed, but as time went on, all the heroes started to die, and, no, no, hold on, I skipped something. Um. After they beat Lucimon, I think they gave power to the three um, angels, uh, Seraphimon, Ophanimon, and Trubimon. Um, he gave, they gave them the power to rule over each individual section of Digital, and over time the heroes passed on. And they gave, they, they put themselves into spirits. One human spirit and one beast spirit. I found that kind of funny because the human beast war so you give them a human and a beast spirit. Um, two is given to Seraphimon, three to Ophanimon, and the rest to Cherubimon. Um, I'm not sure exactly who's given to which. I know, well, I'll hit that later. So, things go on from there. Um, and one day, um, Cherubimon, I think it's he got jealous or upset with Seraphimon and Ophanimon. I don't exactly remember. Um, it was some kind of dispute between Trubimon and the other two that he felt rejected or ignored or something, so he gradually started to go crazy and eventually rebelled against the other two. Um, ended up severely wounding Seraphimon and capturing Ophanimon, and then Seraphimon and Ophanimon sent the spirits they had and hid them to a digital world, while Cherubimon used the ones he had and turned them into soldiers, which would be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I get these some of these names right, so bear with me here. Grumblemon, who is the spirit of earth, Mercurymon, yeah, Mercurymon, the spirit of metal, Ranamon, the Spear of Water, and Arbormon, I think his name is, the Spear of Wood, and who uh, the Dark Spirit, which I'll, that, that's a whole nother, that's a whole story I'm going to get to later. Um, so, he, he uses them, 
try to find the other spear so he can turn all the spirits to him and use their power to become like the on on destructible king of everything so a funny mind gets sick of this and starts sending text messages to phones to people in the human world <clears throat> and thus we're introduced to the news goggle boy Takuya he's the one we see get the message so he sees the message it says do you want to under find your life's destiny I can't remember exactly what I said just go with it he accepts it tells him to go to this train station so he takes off almost gets run over by a truck um, and keeps going gets there gets on the train sees another kid um, gets off at the, the next stop he's told to get off and he gets on the, another train and he managed to chase the other kid down into an elevator <clears throat> and when they go down to the bottom of the elevator they are in like an underground terminal and there's like a, a whole bunch of kids there <clears throat> and Takuya gets a message saying here's your final choice if you decide to get on the train or not <clears throat> so he he does get on it takes him a, a while to decide and he has to chase it down and get on and he sees the kid that he was kind of chasing after the whole way on another train. So when he gets on board, he goes into a couple cars over and runs into JP, Zoe, and Tommy, who are three of the other uh, three the other three that managed to get on. Yeah, out of like oh, like twenty or fifty some of there, only five decided to get on. Well, four got on and one was bullied on there, Tommy. He got pushed on. I don't think he would have gotten on if he had a choice on his own. <clears throat> so they kind of introduced each other to one another. <clears throat> and then when they get to, I think, the, the barrier or something, their phones turn into the new digivice. It's called Detectors. Um, then they kinda, you kind of get flashes of Digimon put over them. Kind of a foreshadowing. So when they get to the digital world, they realize that the train they're on is called Locomon, and Locomons are going to become a a symbol of the digital world in this in this series. So they're put into the fire terminal, and run into Bokomon and Nemon, which are going to be like the two following them around. Bokomon is a a journalist, I think he. He um, studies the history of the digital world, and he uses that to help guide Takuya and everybody else. So Takuya later finds his the first spirit, the spirit of fire. Um, and when he does fanboy rage right here, he spirit evolves into a Gunimon, the spirit of fire. <laughs> And kicks his butt, kicks them, serve him on, but I was trying to find it. So, the next episode, we see Koji, who was the kid Takuya was chasing down, we get the Spear of Light, uh, Lobamon. And then Tommy gets the Spear of Ice, Kumamon. Zoe gets the Spear of Wind, Fairymon. And JP gets the Spear of Lightning, Beetlemon. And. There you go. Everybody has your spirit. They later find out that there are beast spirits too. So I have to go hunt those down. Um, Koji's the first one that finds his. He becomes Kendo Guruma. And the one thing we obviously notice about the beast spirits compared to the human spirits is that the beast spirits are really hard to control, and it shows with, well, especially shows with the uh, Takuya later when he gets his that. They're beasts, you know, they're, they're hard to control. So, Koji kind of goes on a mini rampage for a while. I managed to get the, managed to get the hang of it. Um, a little bit later, Takuya finds his um, Burning Greymon, and he goes absolute haywire for like a whole episode. <laughs> it just shows you that these beast spirits are, they're powerful, but the 
risk um, of using that power is that you have to control them. And uh, later we see JP gets a uh, Metal Kabuterimon and Zoe gets Zephyrmon and Tommy gets Blizzardmon or Orikakumon. Yeah, and in Frontier I mix and match English names with Japanese names for the Digimon. So just go with it. I know I know I called um, Zoe's Human Spirit Fairymon in English it's Kazumon. So let's just go with it. It's I go with the ones that I find easier to pronounce. <laughs> I do that with a lot of the seasons. I don't constantly call them by one language or another. So you got your beast spirits. Okay, so everybody's good. But along the way, they fight the corrupted spirits that Cherubimon has. Um, they manage to get Grumblemon, his B spirit, then Ranamon and hers, and then Arbormon and his, and Mercurymon and his really stupid B spirit. But like I said, the Dark Spirit. Okay, so the whole Duskmon thing is probably one of the best things Frontier has to offer. It's... Duskmon is not the true Spirit of Darkness. Although you would think, when you hear Spirit of Darkness, what's the first thing you think of? Well, when you hear Darkness, you think of pure evil, right? That's one thing I like about this season. It kind of takes a whole new context on Darkness. Um, he, he shows up. He's the last one. After, um... Well, no, it's before, I think Mercury Mom would be the last one standing next to Dustmon. He shows up and, like, kind of single-handedly just blows them out of the water. Um, then Takuyi kind of has, like, a tie moment. Like I said, kind of a tie moment. He doesn't actually go back to Earth. He goes back in time as a Digimon called Flamemon, which... If you want to look at Agunimon's in like um, classic Digimon style, this would be Agunimon's rookie form. I they never I don't know why they gave him that. I think it was kind of like to disguise him Takuya or his past self that he was following, and because he's been he kind of pulled he was kind of like Ty most of the way. He was kind of like pushy and kind of saying we have to do this and he didn't think about the consequences and everything so this was basically just like an episode for him to realize what was going on and uh, besides the fact that this is the episode where Takuya kind of realizes what he's doing wrong and seeing the importance of him and the rest of the guys being there we're also we also notice that there's a guy that we didn't see in the first episode he looks just like Koji, except he's wearing a hat, he's got a green shirt on, and he kind of knows it's him throughout this whole little flashback. Um, it's something that Takuya didn't see um, when he was chasing himself through, the, through this flashback. We see him chasing Koji everywhere, and when Takuya jumped into the elevator with Koji to go downstairs, this guy didn't make it, so he tries to go downstairs go down the stairs to where this place is. He ends up tripping over stairs and falling down and landing on the floor. Okay, now, now keep this in mind, because this is going to be huge later. <laughs> so when he comes back, he finds that everybody but Koji has been kidnapped by... Oh wait, Ranamon's still alive. Duh. See, I'm a little bit... This is the season I'm the least familiar with, so if I make some mistakes, that's why. Um, they're kidnapped and they're trying to find out where Takuya and Koji are, so they're kind of interrogating them in the weirdest way imaginable by tickling them. I, I don't really get it. Ranamon's weird. And Takuya kind of gets a different feel for things, because he kind of took it when he spirit evolved that he was just a human in Digimon form, but when he comes back, he kind of notices that he can feel the Digimon. He can kind of like understand Digimon half of him now. And he uses that to his advantage, and he ends up becoming a lot stronger. And this is 
in my eyes, one of the few character development moments in this whole season. Well, outside of Koji and... Well, I'll get to him later. And then he goes and saves them. So, now we're getting into the whole Lobomon versus Dustmon thing. So, Randomon gets knocked out by Kazumon. That was, or Berrymon. So, it's just down to Mercurymon and Dustmon. So, Mercurymon turns into his beast spirit, which I have to say is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. He's practically like a maze thing with like a whole bunch of different worlds inside of it. I, I don't know. That's that's a little mini rant I'm going to get to in a little bit. And then go inside. Um, Tommy and JP kind of have... Ow. Tommy and JP kind of have um, growing up moments in here. They have to overcome some of their fears and the inner demons. And this is where Zoe ends up finishing off Ranamon. And Lobomon confronts Duskmon. And Agunimon confronts Mercurimon. So we're introduced to two new spirits in this. Due to the fact that this is something I completely skipped, but there's this one point in the earlier part where they ran into Ophanimon's castle and saw that Seraphimon was resting there. They got him free. All the spirits with Dustmon showed up. He managed to get, he got killed. They took his egg with them. So, when Koji and Takuya are the only two left inside Mercurymon's beast spear, I don't know its name. It's I just call it the ugliest thing ever. It manages to give... It gives it to Koji first. It's a what double spirit, which basically fuses the beast and human spirits together. So we're introduced to Beowulfmon, and he takes on Duskmon in some really good fight scenes inside of Mercurymon's beast spirit. And then later, like I said, Takuya was dealing with Mercurymon himself. So to go back to the whole. Mercurymon getting killed thing. When he got killed, Mercurymon absorbed his his data code. So he has Seraphimon's data with him. And this this is where this factor of Mercurymon comes in. He uses it and becomes Crap, I forgot its name. Basically he uses Seraphimon's data and becomes like an evil Seraphimon. And this is probably one of my favorite um, events in Frontier was the whole Agunimon versus Mercurymon thing. Because Takuya is on the verge of death here. He's. Agunimon couldn't touch him. Burning Greymon couldn't touch him. He's basically got Agunimon by the head, ready to kill him. And Seraphimon gives him the power to do the same. And he becomes Aldemon, which is his. which is a combination of Agunimon and Burning Greymon. And he ends up. Getting Seraphimon's data, Mercurymon runs away, and he ends up just downright murdering Mercurymon. It's probably one of my favorite moments of Frontier because, gosh, I hate Mercurymon. I really did not like him. He's just that one guy that's just like, oh, come on, hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Yes, he hit him! <laughs> Finally! So they get out, um... Dustmon and Lobomon are sent, like, somewhere else. But during that fight, he kind of noticed that he could see, like, someone that looked like him inside of Dustmon. I know I'm kind of skipping around and my story's a little bit... Eh. And they go find him after they destroy Mercurymon's beast mode for good. They find them... Uh, Koji and Dustmon somewhere later. And as their fights went on, we find out that Dustmon is really his uh, Koji's brother, Koichi. Dun dun dun. <laughs> now, the backstory here is um, 
when he fell down the staircase, he woke up in the digital world, and they're basically brothers separated at birth. I don't, they never really knew about each other. But to Koji, their mom died. But to Koichi, he knows the true story that they, that his dad got rid of his mom. Koji stayed with his uh, dad took Koji, mom took Koichi. And to prevent Koji from trying to hunt down his mom, he told her, told her him yeah, that she died. So, Trubimon kind of twists his mind with this, trying to make it sound like that Koji and his dad are both guilty by like, kicking him aside and everything. So then, he gives him the Spear of Darkness. So that's kind of a brief overview of this. So this goes on for a while, and... Um... He find, um, they finally manage to beat him, and they get the spirits back. They get the darkness spirits. So Koichi is kind of shocked, but he's he's normal-ish. Um, then they meet up with they, they run across Shurubimon, fake Shurubimon, and the spirits of darkness are purified. Sounds weird, huh? So. Koichi spirit evolves into the true spirit of darkness, Loamon, and his beast spirit. Um, crap. <laughs> oh, I just had his name like three seconds ago. Shoot, well, you know what I'm talking about. It's Loamon and. I'll probably put an annotation right here. <laughs> putting it what it is and I'll facepalm I'll go look it up when I'm done and I'll facepalm because I forgot it and he ends up kicking this fake Trubimon behind and this is like I said this is something I really give I like how Frontier approaches this they actually prove that you can have good darkness which is something that I don't think many shows or stories or anything have even really approached when you think darkness you think pure evil right I mean, this is the first time you've ever seen, like, a, a good darkness. And I like that idea. So, yeah, I, li I, li I like it. Like, you have, you have corrupted darkness. I mean, isn't that kind of like a contradiction? <laughs> Not in this case. So, they manage to get to Cherubimon's palace, where they find Ophanimon's locked up. Potamon, the Sarathimon A hatches into a Potamon. And Pokemon goes crazy about that because he thinks it's his son. Nah. Pokemon's a weirdo. <laughs> so, Trubimon starts taking detectors and holds onto the spirits. Ophanimon gets freed, gives the spirits back to them and tells him that there's a way that they can get a stronger form. So we basically have Zoe and Tommy giving all the spirits they've collected to Takuya and JP and Koichi giving all their spirits to Koji. So we're introduced to Hyper Spirit Evolution which is basically half of later information. Um, Emperor Greymon and Magna Grumon and they beat up Trubimon. Okay, yeah, so he's purified and he's gone. So is Ophanimon. So they're eggs. We won't see them for a while. Um this is this is a thing that a lot of people kind of miss. Is that when he gets killed, like the, all the data he collected fell into one of the gaps where data was missing. It awakens Lucimon. Dun, dun 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 Yeah. And he sends two royal knights. I think this is the first time the royal knights were introduced in media. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. The, no, I think X Evolution came out after this did. So, in the case, yes. Unless they showed up in the manga somewhere. I, I don't read the mangas. I need to. And we are. This is the part of this. This is this is the part of Frontier where I don't like. 
because they're trying to take all the data from the digital world and give it to Lucimon so he can be revived, which is basically what happens because Magna Garumon and Emperor Greymon keep getting their butts handed to him for like, what, six, seven episodes? They keep getting creamed. <laughs> So, yeah, they am getting creamed a lot. The whole digital world's destroyed. Lucimon wakes up, gets stronger, kicks Magna Garumon and Programma's butt even more. <laughs> and when they're hanging out for dear life, they go chase him down into the court of the digital world. He's trying to open up a gateway from the digital world to Earth because he wants to take over Earth. Who doesn't? And along the way, we find out that. They all have data code themselves, so they can be absorbed like the Digimon and the Digital World pieces. Wow, this one's probably going to be my longest review. <laughs> and Koichi notices that he doesn't get one. So after a while, he realizes that he's, I think, no, it was uh, Road Nightmon told him that he's not really there. Actually, when he fell down the staircase, his spirit was taken into the digital world. His body is still on Earth. So, he's technically a ghost. And he realizes this and gives his spirit to darkness to Koji and sacrifices himself to save the others. And this is when we're introduced to the big boy of the season, Susanoo Man, which is every single spirit fused together and apparently it's something that's never happened before because Bogumon didn't know about Sasanomon. He knew about the spirits, he knew about the fusions, he knew about everything but this was not in his book of history historical events so this is something brand new for the ancient the legendary heroes and he soundly beats Lucimon and they scan his data okay good but Lucimon is a spirit of, is a warrior of chaos, meaning he holds the light and darkness equally. They only absorb the light half of him, so he gets reborn into Lucimon Satan mode, I think what it was, which is the complete evil half of Lucimon. So this thing is a big huge demon thing with a ball with a little shrimp puff in it. Um, the big body is the muscle and the shrimp puff is the brain so he manages to get into the digital world they pull him back into the empty no he manages to get into the human world they pull him back into the empty space of the digital world kill the body and this is this is the thing that i think frontier does better than every other season it has the best ending where son of gets about to get stabbed by the shrimp puff the warriors kick the humans out and one by one they slash him, which I think was an amazing scene. He dies, they all thank him, send him back to Earth. Um, and then probably my favorite ending in the entire series is that Loamon tells Koji that he can still sense Koichi's alive. So they go hunt, find out where he fell down, they said he's in a hospital, they go send him to a hospital. They go to the hospital where he's in, he's in surgery and they're, they're about to lose him. And Ofanimon pulls off one more miracle and revives him. And that was that was a great moment seeing him and everybody react to that. And yeah, Frontier. That was a long story overview. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of briefly go over the characters now because this is going way too long. Um, Takuya is the new leader. He's he's a hothead. That's kind of a trait, except for everybody but Takato and Taiki. I think he's the only one that wasn't a hothead. Those are the only two that weren't hotheads. Um, he he gradually gets to hint over time, and he kind of accepts other people's feelings and ideas, and he becomes a better leader because of it. But I wouldn't consider him among one of the best leaders, because he's even even though he gets it later, he's still a bit pushy. Um, Koji is kind of. Matt on a higher level of soloness, but he gradually adapts to everybody else and becomes um, Takuya's good pal later on. Although they're 
they kind of disagree on a lot of things throughout. Um, he kind of grows up, like I said, he grows up probably the second most because he starts off as, I don't want to have anything to do with these people, and then he becomes, okay, I'm going to hang around you guys. And then he's like, I don't, I can't do anything without you guys. <laughs> and the whole Koichi thing drove him crazy, and then he felt more relaxed after Koichi was with them. Um, Zoe, she's okay. Um, she's probably one of the few females I can actually tolerate. Well, no. I can actually tolerate most of the females, but she's probably one of the most relaxed, I guess that's the term I'm thinking of, relaxed females in the series. Um, I uh, don't really know what else to say about Zoe. Um, JP's kind of goofy. Um, he's jealous of Takuya because he wants to be Tommy's older brother figure, which, yeah, Tommy looks up to Takuya as an older brother. Um, and plus he has a thing for Zoe, so he keeps trying to flirt with her and, and never gets him anywhere. Um, he's probably my second or third favorite character in this season behind Takuya and, well and Koichi, because Koichi's backstory, I think it's better than Ken's, in all honesty. I, I, I like him better than Ken, as the human that was corrupted and reverted back and fought along the good guys. I like Koichi better than Ken. Um, you know, like I said, Tommy is the little kid. He looks up to Taku, Takuya as an older brother, and he grows up because he goes from like a TK crybaby um, to a guy who can stand up on his own two feet, and he it does not really anything that drives him to that. It's just experience, and I think he can because he looks up to Takuya. He gradually like forces himself to grow up. Um, uh, Koichi, like I said, I've been over Koichi's thing in the story overview, so I don't really think I need to go into. He's probably my favorite character in the series, in the season. Yeah, because of all the stuff he went through and how he's he's like so calm. I mean, you don't ever really see him get like overly emotional. I mean, yeah, he's a bit scarred after the whole getting reverted back from Dustmon thing, and when he finds out that he's technically not even physically there in the digital world, he gets a bit scarred. But he takes it all kind of calmly. So. Mm. Um, Bokumon is, like I said, he's the historic guy. He knows everything. He has a book that tells him everything they need to know. Nimon is the comedic relief guy. He's probably the best comedic relief Digimon in the entire franchise. Waistband slap. Ow. He's hilarious to watch. Yeah, that's my kind of crappy overview of the characters of Frontier. Okay. So, like I said at the beginning, the season is pretty heavily controversial, and it's mostly to do with the whole spirit evolution thing. And a lot of people really do not like the fact that the humans turn into the Digimon. Now, personally, I wasn't really fond of the idea at first when I heard about it, because it looked like it was a bad idea on paper, but I think they did it the best way you possibly could, and it turned out to be one of the baddest parts of this whole season. But that's the one thing that people complain about the most, and like I said, that's probably one of the few things that doesn't bug me about this season. Okay, now I, it may sound like that I'm trashing, I'm going to start hating on the season, but no, I'm not, I don't hate Frontier. I don't dislike Frontier. Is just compared to like tamers and savers. I wonder how many people I just enraged by saying that. And a cross wars and adventure. The story, like I, like this is something I was telling my brother when I was talking about it. Frontier is fifty episodes long. Okay, about thirty six of them. My numbers probably off are the whole Cherubimon arc. Now, back in my Zero Two review, I was saying that the 
the Digimon Emperor saga was too felt like it was too dragged out because twenty two episodes of one arc is a bit too long. Okay, now thirty four episodes of one arc. Yeah, that's that's like my biggest complaint with Frontier is that that opening arc is too long. It it just gets it drags out too much. That's that's probably like a personal gripe of mine. That opening arc just drags out way too long. Although it does have a lot of good moments in it, don't get me wrong. It just feels like it drags out. There's nothing wrong with the the story. The story written is good. It's very good. It just drags out. You're like, come on. Go to something new. Because I know there's something. There's going to be something after Trubimon. They hinted at Lucymon early in the season. So we kind of had a feeling it was going to be there. Get to it already. You have to keep waiting. It just drags on too long for me. And then when you get to the Lucymon part with the two Royal Knights... Like I said, this is probably a crybaby complaint, and I'll admit to that. But like I said, they they keep getting creamed each episode. It's not a matter of, are they going to be able to win? It's a matter of, how long are they going to last? Because, ugh, that was, in my personal opinion, this is like the weakest team of any season. I have to say, this is the weakest team, because I think they lost the most battles of any of any team that's that's probably just like a little crybaby-ish complaint but it kinda bugs me after a while that they start losing I'm just like ugh you know War Graham on Metal Guru Mall probably would have had these two beaten by now shoot maybe even well shoot Magna Guru Mall beat Road Knight Mall in one episode it took Magna Guru Mall like seven episodes to beat her him depending on which version you're watching. <laughs> so, I mean, it just kind of got disappointing after all, seeing these guys get beat episode after episode. Um, But, like I said, all in all, the story of Frontier is fine. It's a great story. Like I said, though, there's just a couple complaints. Character development, this is probably the... Oh, uh, well, after this last season, probably the third weakest. And personally, I don't like many characters. Well, I mean, like I said, this is the season I'm the least familiar with, so I don't have a strong connection with this group like I do the other seasons. So that's that's just me. I'm not really going to take that away from what I think of the season. Um, like I said, a lot of the parts of the story seem to drag out. Something that I'm briefly going to cover over right now is I think this was just used for because the others, the corrupted spirits, were evil. But I think that the evils, the corrupted spirits, beast forms, like look at Albermon, he's just this giant lizard, and Mercurymon's maze of wonders, all this stuff. I think that the corrupted spirits, beast forms, were a bit pushed. Because, like I said, you look at the good guy spirits, you know, they're kind of like animalized version of the human spirits, and then you get the enemy beast spirits and their monsters. I mean, they were all together, right? At one point in time, these ten Digimon were partners, right? Then why the heck would you have half of them where the beast spirits are still human-y, and then, like, the other half, they're monsters. I mean, I think it's it's a bit odd. I think it was a bit pushed. Either make the enemy beast spirits kind of like Grumblemon. You know, his beast spirit was kind of like a monsterized version of his human spirit. I'm okay with that. But then you get like the others and they're just like, gee Louise. Either monsterize the good guy beast spirits or humanize the, the enemy beast spirits. It would have made more sense to me. And it may have made some of the battles more interesting, but that's, that's, I don't know. I don't know how you guys want to look at that one. I don't even know if any of you noticed that or even cared. But that was just like a little mini thing I had against it. So, I'm going to put this season 
fifth on my favorites list. And I don't dislike it because of the evolution. That's one of my favorite things about this season. It's like I said, it just drags out. The enemy beast spear thing seems a bit pushed on you. And the fact that... Now, get me wrong on this. I think, like I said, I think these guys get beat up way too much. They lose too many battles for a hero team to lose. <laughs> so, Frontier's got a good story. I think just a lot of the ways they approached it were wrong. Well, not wrong, just badly thought out. So, I mean, this like I, like I said about Tamers. I can understand why people love this season so much, and then I can understand why some people hate this season so much. So, I put it, like I said, fifth, but right behind Tamers, right above Zero Two. So, if you look at my list down below, I got three more seasons left, and two more spots open, because like I said in my adventure review, Cross Wars is my second favorite. So we're down to Savers and Cross Hunters, and last spot is obviously going to be You Know What. So I'm going to be talking about probably the universally the most hated season for some reason, uh, Savers, which, like I said, after looking at seeing people talk about the season and everything, it's the universally most hated season. And personally, I don't know why. And I'll talk about why in my next review, why I'm probably one of the few Digimon fans who think Savers is one of the best seasons. So, yeah, next video I'm talking about the misadventures of Marcus Damon. <laughs> Alright, ketchup is out.